Throughout history, many people have put their life on the line in the pursuit of new inventions. One of those people was Franz Reichelt. Reichelt was born in Austria in 1878. When he was 20 years old, he moved to the City of Lights, Paris. Trying to blend in, he changed his name to Francois in 1909. He lived near the opera and started a successful dressmaking business. His clients were mainly Austrians who were on a trip. After 10 years in Paris, Francois grew increasingly restless. He closely followed the developments in the aviation world. He decided to use his tailoring skill to develop a parachute suit. Just a few years earlier, the Wright brothers had made the first controlled and powered aircraft flight. Developments in aviation caused many casualties. There were parachutes and balloons available to jump from big heights, but jumping from lower heights or airplanes was still deathly. A French colonel offered a large reward for the inventor that could solve this problem. Francois' early tests with dummies were hopeful. The dummies had foldable wings and were dropped from the fifth floor. Sadly, converting this idea into a real-life wearable suit was more difficult. The suit he created was heavy, 70 kilos. The French Aviation Club rejected his design and tried to persuade him to stop trying. As you might expect, Francois did exactly the opposite. However, his tests with dummies remained unsuccessful. In 1911, Francois decided to test the suit himself, jumping from a height of 8 meters. Not surprisingly, the suit failed to deploy and he broke his leg. He thought that the low height was contributing to the failures of his test. The amount of high buildings at the time were limited, so he applied for permission to complete his test from the most famous spot in Paris, the Eiffel Tower. Constructed from 1887 to 1889 as the entrance to the 1889 World's Fair, the tower is a whopping 324 meters high. After some back and forth, he finally received permission from the local police. February 4, 1912 would be the day that he could properly test his invention from the Eiffel Tower. On that cold, windy morning, he arrived at the Eiffel Tower. The press and onlookers at the scene were surprised to see that he was wearing the suit himself. One journalist remarked later that the suit could not have weighed more than 9 kilograms. The surface area of the parachute would have been around 30 square meters. Francois immediately made it clear that he was going to make the jump himself. Onlookers and his friends tried to persuade him to use a dummy, but Francois was convinced he was quoted as saying, I want to try the experiment myself and without trickery, as I intend to prove the worth of my invention. After checking the landing zone, Francois started making his way up the tower. As he climbed the stairs, he paused, turning back to the crowd, raised his hand and wished them a cheery, see you soon. However, a guard at the tower blocked his way. The guard had seen earlier tests with dummies and thought it was a terrible idea to make the jump. After some discussion, Francois was allowed to continue because the police had granted him permission to complete his test. He went up with his two friends and a cameraman. One cameraman was stationed at the landing zone to record the landing. At 8.22 a.m., observed by a crowd of about 30 journalists and curious onlookers, he readied himself on a stool placed on a restaurant table next to the interior guard rail of the tower's first deck, a little more than 57 meters above the ground. After adjusting his apparatus with the assistance of his friends and checking the wind direction by throwing a piece of paper taken from a small book, he placed one foot on the guardrail, hesitated for about 40 seconds, then leapt outwards. According to a local newspaper, he was calm and smiling just before he jumped. His parachute, which had seemed to be only half open, folded around him almost immediately, and he fell for a few seconds before striking the frozen soil at the foot of the tower. His fall created a 15-centimeter hole in the ground. It was reported that his right leg and arm were crushed, his skull and spine were broken, and that he was bleeding from his mouth, nose, and ears. He was already dead by the time the onlookers rushed to his body, but he was taken to the hospital where he was officially pronounced dead. The next morning, all local newspapers put the story on the front page, including many photographs. People wondered whether Francois had been suicidal. His friends talked about the immense pressure he felt to attract more sponsors to finance his project. What Francois did not know was that two days earlier, a man with a self-made parachute jumped from the viewing deck of the Statue of Liberty and survived. Another inventor in the U.S. already had a patent pending on a wearable parachute. The Parisian police denied giving Francois permission to make the jump himself. 
Unsurprisingly, further permissions to jump from the Eiffel Tower were not easily accepted. More recently, the tower has been the scene of a number of illicit base jumps. A Norwegian man died in 2005 after losing his canopy while attempting a promotional jump for a clothing firm. The first parachuting death at the tower since Reichelt. A sanctioned stunt jump for the 1985 James Bond film, A View to a Kill, was successful. Did you like this video? At Explaining the World, we create multiple videos a week on the world's most interesting topics. Subscribe and click the bell to not miss anything. Anything specific you want to know about? Let us know in the comments.